Okay, so Pi News episode 17. And if you want to see any of my older episodes of Pi News, uh, there's a playlist on my channel. So this is the 17th episode. It's worth going through because some of the things are pretty timeless and there's things that you might have missed if you've not seen them before. So first up, Tom's Hardware, which do the PiCast podcast, had uh, Evan Upton on and uh, he talked about the Pi Pico and it was a really interesting interview. Um, the audio quality is quite bad, so don't worry about your speakers or anything if you're listening to it. Uh, it does get better as he moves closer to the microphone a bit later in the video. But the cool thing is uh, when he compares the uh, RP2040, which is the custom processor made by the Raspberry Pi Foundation uh, for the Pi Pico, and uh, he compares it to the uh, Apple M1, uh, which is what I've got in my MacBook Air. He says the number of transistors is 12 million versus 12 billion in the Apple M1 chip. Obviously, it's, it's a completely different chip, but uh, it, is, it is a great thing that they're making their own processor, and it is incredibly low powered. And he also mentions in it that he's seen some 1980s emulation, uh, and it sounded like he was talking about ZX Spectrum. Um, so that will be interesting to see, and a bit more about Pico a bit later in the news. But I'll put a link to all of this in the description. And a great story on Hacker Day, uh, repairing 200 plus Raspberry Pis for a good cause. Uh, so here we've got James Dawson purchased the collection of broken single board computers with the intention of repairing them so they could be sent to developing countries for use in schools. Uh, later on in the article, James came up with a bash script that allowed him to check several hardware components including the USB, Ethernet, I2C and GPO with the script. It's a really good project and really nice to see lovely GPO pins there. Uh, and you can see some weird, weird thing going on with... Uh, solder or something there not not good looking at all but yeah a nice to see and this was a story that i was going to put in the previous pi news but uh, somehow i missed the link um, but uh, pi station 2 which is a raspberry pi 4 inside a ps2 which is uh, I, I just like things like this they're just interesting um, and uh, you can see the ps2 looks very nice with all the led lights and everything and unfortunately, I couldn't find any um, any more images. I always like to see how it's fitted in, where all the connections are and things like that. But uh, still, a pretty cool project. And next up uh, is this tiny display for the Pico. Uh, you can see it's powered by mains at the moment, uh, but it's got buttons on there, and uh, you can see there's a game of Tetris running on there. And uh, so it'll be really interesting to see what people get this little tiny machine running in the future. I like this one. Uh, this is a 20 inch all in one computer using a Raspberry Pi 4 and uh, you can see it's a, a monitor sprayed purple keyboard and mouse with just one mains cable going into it. Now if we scroll down you can see this is the board that the Pi connects to that connects it to the monitor uh, and so that allows it to have just one power supply. And uh, it's quite a nice, de I love it when, they, when there's all these details, power testing to see how much power it supplies. Uh, and this is ready for the Pi 4. And you can see still a bit of power testing. And there's the Pi 4. And I can see a little mouse keyboard dongle in there. The only thing is uh, I didn't see any access to any USB ports when it's in there. But he did explain it's for kids and uh, I'm sure it fits the use that it needs. Connecting HDMI to the HDMI out of the Pi. Bit of hot glue there and then sprayed over. HDMI ribbon cable. So yeah, definitely a bit of fun. And there's another detailed list here with all the parts and things if you wanted to do something similar. But, uh, but yeah, I really like the look of it. Next up is this, uh, which is a PCB for a slim Raspberry Pi touchscreen tablet powered by uh, Command Module 4. So I don't know how many images. Oh yeah, so so there's a little board which allows the. You can see it's pretty slim uh, as as Raspberry Pi based tablets go, uh, and uh, looks like it will be very interesting. There's no battery there at the moment. It's mains powered, but uh, he did say in the comments that uh, battery power is going to be something that's looked at in the future, and it is a work in progress. This is the f sort of first one that he's done, but uh, yeah, looks looks really interesting. And there's a bit more uh, details on Tom's hardware as well. So that's where I got the battery information. There's no battery circuit in this edition, but plans are already in place to include one in the next iteration. Osterhoss also mentioned the possibility of adding a metal shield in the housing that touches the CPU for passive cooling. So that's one to watch. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.